चैप्टर नाइन रिप्रोडक्शन इन एनिमल्स क्लास एट इन दिस चैप्टर वी शैल लर्न हाउ रिप्रोडक्शन टेक्स प्लेस इन एनिमल्स एनिमल्स गिव बर्थ टू देयर यंग वंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल ह्यूमन गिव बर्थ टू बेबी इन सेम मैनर कैट डॉग काउ गिव बर्थ टू देयर यंग वंस वाइल अदर एनिमल्स लाइक हैन ऑस्ट्रिच क्रो लेज एग्स विच हैच इन टू चिकन एक्सेट्रा that is they don't directly give birth to their young ones they first lay eggs which hatch in, under proper conditions now we will know more about sexual reproduction like plants the reproductive parts in animals also produce gametes that fuse to form a zygote it is the zygote which develops into a new individual this type of reproduction beginning from the fusion of male and female gamete is called sexual reproduction let us find out the reproductive parts in humans and study the process of reproduction in them here in figure 9.2 we can see human sperm it has a typical head and a middle piece and a long tail the tongue help the tail helps it for moving around the male reproductive organs include a pair of testes singular testes two sperm ducts and a penis the testes produce the male gamete called sperms millions of sperms are produced by the testes look at figure 9.2 which shows the picture of sperm though the sperms are very small in size each has a head middle piece and a tail the female reproductive organ the female reproductive organs are a pair of ovaries oviducts or fallopian tubes and the uterus the ovary produces female gametes called ova eggs this is uterus this one is oviduct and here lies ovary there are two ovaries left and right and there are two oviducts in human beings a single matured egg is released into oviduct by one of the ovaries every month uterus is the part where development of the baby take place like the sperm and egg is also a single cell in figure 9.5 fertilization process has been shown where sperms are trying to enter into the ovum human ovum in in figure 9.4 its structure has been shown and a nucleus is seen clearly in the human ovum so you can say that zygote is the beginning of a new adventure the size of the egg may be very small as in the case of humans and it may also be very large as in case of hens and ostrich ostrich egg is the largest egg now what is fertilization it is the first step in the process of reproduction the fusion is the first step of a sperm and an ovum when sperms come in contact with an egg one of the sperms may fuse with the egg such fusion of the egg and the sperm is called fertilization during fertilization the nuclei of the sperm and the egg fuse to form a single nucleus 
This results in the formation of a fertilized egg or zygote. The figure 9.6 shows the fusing nuclei. The process of fertilization is the emitting of an egg cell from the mother and a sperm cell from the father. So the new individual inherits some characteristics from the mother and some from the father. Look at your brother or sister. See if you can recognize some characters in them similar to those of your mother or your father. Like curly hair, uh, color of eye etc. Fertilization which takes place inside the female body is called internal fertilization. Internal fertilization occurs in many animals including humans, cows, dogs and hens. Have you heard of test tube babies? Do really babies grow in test tube? Uh, it is a misconception. Actually uh, there are some women in, vi in which oviducts are blocked. So these women are unable to bear babies because sperms cannot reach the egg for fertilization. In such cases, doctors collect freshly released egg and sperms and keep them together for a few hours for IVF or in vitro fertilization, fertilization outside the body. In case fertilization occurs, the zygote is allowed to dwell for about a week and then it is placed in the mother's uterus. Complete development takes place in the uterus uh, like in other women and the baby is born like any other baby. So babies born through this technique are called test tube babies. So this term is actually misleading because babies cannot grow in test tubes. In frog the fertilization occurs outside the body of the female and this type of fertilization in which the fusion of a male and a female gamete takes place outside the body of the female is called external fertilization in the case of egg the female lays egg and the male deposits sperms over them each sperm spins randomly in water with the help of its long tail. The sperm contact, uh, uh, the sperms come in contact with the eggs. This results in fertilization as it occurs outside the female body. So this is known as external fertilization. Fish and starfish etc. come into this category in them external fertilization occurs though these animals lay hundreds of eggs and release millions of sperms all the eggs do not get fertilized fertilized and develop into new individuals this is because the eggs and sperms get exposed to water movement wind and rainfall also there are some other animals in the pond which may feed on eggs. Thus, production of large number of eggs and sperms is necessary to ensure fertilization of at least a few of them. So, now we will proceed towards development of embryo. Fertilization results in the formation of a zygote which begins to develop into an embryo. The zygote divides repeatedly to give rise to a ball of cells. Figure 9.8, this one. So the cells then begin to form groups and develop into different tissues and organs of the body. This developing structure is termed an embryo. The embryo gets embedded in the wall of the uterus for further development. This is zygote and through different processes of growth it traveled into the uterus where it itself embedded to the wall of uterus and grows there. This is the uterus wall developing mid embryo the embryo takes food from the uterus 
and grows a zygote formation and development of embryo from zygote balo cells enlarged in C figure embedding of the embryo in the uterus enlarged okay the embryo continues to develop in the uterus it gradually develops body parts such as hands legs hands eyes ears etc the stage of the embryo in which all of the body parts can be identified is called fetus when the development of the fetus is complete the mother gives birth to the baby now what are viviparous and oviparous animals the animals which gives the animals which give birth to young ones are called viviparous animals those animals which lay eggs are called oviparous animals now we have an activity 9.2 try to observe eggs of the following organism frog lizard butterfly or moth hen and crow or any other bird were you able to observe eggs of all of them make drawings of the eggs that you have observed hope you enjoy while doing this activity but collect the eggs carefully and if possible don't try to pick up them because it may render them uh, damaged and they may now grow into new individual so you may draw them but try don't to pick up them thanks the eggs of few animals are easy to observe because their mothers lay them outside their bodies these are examples of oviparous animals but you may not be able to collect the eggs of a dog cow or cat this is because they do not lay eggs the mother gives birth to young ones these are examples of viviparous animals young ones to adults in class 7 uh, you may have seen the life cycle of silkworm from egg to larva larva or caterpillar to pupa and then to adult in class 8 we will study the life cycle of frog or from X to early tadpole stage and early tadpole to late tadpole stage, st uh, stage then ultimately adult frog uh, if uh, you were given pictures or sam uh, samples of early tadpole and adult frog you may say uh, you may uh, see variety of uh, body differentiation and uh, they are not looking similar to each other so in this case of tadpoles they transform into adults capable of jumping and swimming the transformation of the larva into an adult through drastic changes and this process is known as metamorphosis In human beings, body parts similar to those present in the adults are present from the time of birth. So we uh, don't see such drastic metamorphosis in human beings. Now we will know more about asexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, like amoeba, hydra, only one parent is involved or a single parent is involved so this type of reproduction in which only a single parent is involved is called a sexual reproduction get permanent slides of hydra this is your activity 9.3 observe them using hand lens or a microscope look out for any bulges from the parent board count the number of bulges that you see in different slides also note the size of the bulges draw the diagram of hydra, hydra as you see it okay. and then compare it and here is a, uh, you are seeing a bulge which uh, is growing into a new organism this bud 
uh, grows into a new individual since new individuals dwell from the birds in the hydra this type of a sexual reproduction is called budding and here it is a bud you can easily see it now another method of a sexual reproduction which involves single parent is uh, is observed in case of amoeba you have already learned about the structure of amoeba this is a amoeba it begins the uh, process of reproduction by the division of its nucleus into two nuclei here one nuclei is being divided into two nuclei finally two amoeba are produced from one parent amoeba this is daughter amoeba so as two amoeba are formed from only uh, one single parent so this uh, fission is known as binary and binary fission in amoeba is an example of a sexual reproduction now story of dolly the clone and in this Cloning of an animal was successfully performed for the first time by Ian Wilmot and his colleagues at the Roslin Institute in Edinburgh, Scotland. They successfully cloned a sheep named Dolly. Dolly was born on 5th July 1996 and was the first mammal to be cloned. In in this process of cloning, during a cell was collected from the membrane gland of a female fin dorset figure 9.13 a simultaneously an egg was obtained from a scottish black face a figure 9.13 b the nucleus was removed from the egg then the nucleus of the mammary gland cells from the fin dorset sheep was inserted into the egg of the scottish black face a whose nucleus had been removed the egg thus produced was implanted into the Scottish blackface egg. Development of this egg followed normally and finally Dolly was born. Though Dolly was given birth by the Scottish blackface egg, it was found to be absolutely identical to the faint or set shape from which the nucleus was taken. Since the nucleus from the egg of the Scottish blackface egg was moved, Dolly did not show any character of the Scottish blackface egg. Dolly was a healthy clone of the Finn Dorset sheep and produced several offspring of her own through normal sexual means. Unfortunately, Dolly died on 14 Feb 2003 due to a certain lung disease. Since Dolly, several attempts have been made to produce cloned mammals. However, many die before birth or die soon after birth. The cloned animals are many a times found to be born with severe abnormalities. Now, keywords covered in the chapter a sexual reproduction, binary fission, budding, X, embryo, external fertilization, fertilization, fetus, internal fertilization, metamorphosis, oviparous animals, sexual reproduction, sperms, viviparous animals, and zygote. And this completes the chapter reproduction in animals thanks